From the teeming cities of Europe and the sun-bleached beaches of the east, our cameras turn north to the ancient immutable highlands of Scotland, where the years roll by uncounted as the heather blooms and fades and solitude broods unbroken. But the silence of the highlands and the empty moorlands obscure a story that is moving up to the headlines of topical controversy. and glens twinkled with the flocks of highland crofters until the enclosure of the great estates for grouse moors and deer forests dispossessed the tenant farmers and decay and desolation settled on their homesteads while their sons and daughters drifted to the industries of Clydeside and the lowlands. Time moved on and wars and crises strangled the great houses of the north as surely as the crofters' cottages, and it seemed that the hills must lie desolate in the mists and drifting rain. And so it might have been if the insatiable factories and the overworked coal mines of the south had not prompted men of vision to search the highlands for their unexploited wealth of power. Every year as the mists and rain drive over the hills, the springs well up and the bogs overflow to start a thousand thousand burns trickling down to the rivers and the locks. Year by year, tens of millions of tons of water flow down from the highlands to the sea, while industry cries out for power, electric power from water. The burns and rivers, locks and waterfalls no longer flow unnoticed to the sea, for the eye of the engineer is on them. began to spread its steel web among the abandoned hamlets, and the new locks appeared behind great dams of concrete spanning the lonely glens. Already the latent forces of the mountains were beginning to be understood, and tiny but significant works of man began to move outward and upward to the eternal hills. And in the valleys the gaunt masonry of the power stations arose in a tangle of landlines and towering pylons. The drift from the highlands swung over to reverse, and the white-coated engineers rule in the pastures of their forefathers. schemes of the 1920s were only symptoms of the great change to come, and their scattered power stations were still lost in the immensity of the landscape. But while the artillery of the Second World War still muttered across Europe, a new stage of the planner's dream went into action, and the last bombs that roared down on Germany were re-echoed in Glen Tummel and Glengarry.
great new plans for hydroelectric power in the highlands are a Scottish affair, designed, financed, and administered by Scotsmen. And the thousands of workers from the quarries and dams are mainly Scots, though men from all Britain were drawn on as the labor reserves of the North ran dry. And lately, the huge assembly of workmen has been strengthened by Dutchmen, Frenchmen, Poles, Balts, Yugoslavs, Ukrainians, and displaced persons from all Europe. of the Tumulgari projects are rising day by day from the riverbeds and day by day the urgent tempo of the work increases. Inside the Clooney Dam, below Loch Tummel, gapes the dark portal of one of the most tremendous undertakings of the whole Highland scheme, the Clooney Tunnel. Through three miles of steel-hard quartz and granite rock, 500 men are driving a 24-foot tunnel that will carry the pent-up waters of the river down to the power station above Pitlochry. Day and night, night and day, the shifts come and go as the roaring drills creep forward a thousand feet beneath the mountains. The shattering din of the pneumatic machinery reduces the operators to sign language. Flying dust and steaming exhaust transform the drilling face to an inferno of reverberating darkness. Only a week before our cameraman went into the tunnel, a man was killed by a fall of rock. And now an inspecting engineer mounts the drill carriage before it is towed back down the tunnel to a place of safety while the charges are laid in the drill holes that blast down more tons of rock. Six hundred pounds of dynamite go into each shot, and the workers stream away down the tunnel before the threat of the great explosion as the empty dynamite trolleys roll out. Far down the tunnel where the conveyors end, the workers crouch and watch for the explosion. As the smother of gases and flying dust begins to settle, the men are back at the face and the roaring, almost human pneumatic shovels bite into the mountain of broken rock and load after load begins its journey through the echoing darkness down the conveyors to the outer air. And still the tunnel creeps on, foot by foot, through the heart of the mountain.
The colossal quantities of broken rock and soil from the underground works are carried on sloping conveyor belts to the mountainside. And close by is one of the strangest constructions of the whole plant. A wide shaft is being sunk down towards the tunnel below, which, when the water begins to pour through from the dam, will allow the surge of pressure to be taken up and evened out before passing to the turbines. The excavated stone from the shaft is not, as might be expected, lifted up to the hillside, but is scraped into a small shaft sunk into the tunnel below and thence carried up on the main conveyor system. By this apparently Alice in Wonderland method, the debris of both workings reach the stone tips with the use of a single transport system. Here among the cliffs and debris of the surge shaft, we find some of the youngsters from Central Europe who are helping to provide for Britain's future. These young men are mainly Ukrainians from beyond the Iron Curtain, who are now exchanging years of slavery, prison and neglect for a new future, where the village Bobby replaces the secret police and existence blossoms into life. The streams that feed the river and the dams that hold them, the tunnel that carries a new river through the mountains, focus their whole tremendous weight at the tunnel mouth, where the three steel pipelines dip downward for the last plunge into the turbines. Here the shape of the turbine beds is already forming under the eye of the engineers, as the great cranes swing to and fro, as ton after ton of concrete pours into the rising foundations of the powerhouse. As the endless round of work goes on, we leave this great project that will affect the lives of millions to see for ourselves how the changing face of the countryside is affecting the people who live there now. The rising waters of Loch Tummel will soon cover this little cottage forever, while up at the head of the loch, the green meadows and ancient wall gardens of Tummel Lodge will lie beneath the dim shadows of the trout as they move in dark waters, and the old house that once gave shelter to the followers of the young pretender will stand half sunken in the waters of the loch. New homes are being found for the people who must lose their property, but more than bricks and mortar lie under the new loch tummel. Downstream another dam will pile the river waters high over the ancient bridge below the pass of Killicranke, and its tree-shadowed glen will broaden to a deep lake while the waters will creep up to the very outskirts of Pitlochry. The town recreation ground of Pitlochry is doomed, and the decaying sports pavilion and abandoned playing fields have begun to crumble and dissolve, as if they felt already the cold touch of the advancing water. However, neither the planners of the power scheme nor the people of Pitlochry have waxed unduly sentimental about their sunken acres, and already a new sports ground has arisen in the meadows below the last dam, and the Saturday cricket match is in full swing. This new ground is actually better than the old one, and the home team will now have a field as secure against winter flooding as a million tons of concrete can make it. And certainly, none of the players seem to be shedding tears for the dead past. As we leave the cricketers at play and return again to the hills, we have seen how the changing generations bring each their problem to the highlands. And maybe now at last the wit of man has found an answer to them all. Now the shepherd can graze his flocks in peace and the farmer till his fields while far below them the great tunnels carry the ancient force of the highland hills to power the workshops of the nation.
this is Stuart McPherson, signing off on another story of today.